Today we're looking at starter motors, how they work, why sometimes they don't work, how to rebuild them, should you rebuild them, or should you just swap them out? Keep watching, find out. So I'm working on this Volkswagen starter, and this is pretty much the starter of the last 40 years is what we have right here. And this is its the upgraded version, the, the gear reduction. You can see that the motor is a lot smaller because it runs a set of gears in there. This The motor spins a lot faster and runs gears and able to do the same thing as something this size did, but they're virtually identical. This is how they've been for the last 40 years. There's a couple components, there's two main components to it. A starter relay, this nub on the top, and the starter motor down here. When you went to older styles, you had, like here's an old Ford one right here. This is just a motor. This just is just a spinny thingy. And this is its starter relay separately, which is actually kind of nice because these fail probably two times before the brushes or something else in the starter fails. So you can replace just this probably for every, uh, you place this twice for every uh, one starter you replace. But we'll move that aside. This is probably what, this is what you have on your car if it's made in the last 40 years, this style right here. We'll go to the bigger brother right here just to show you some more details. So this is the, the bottom part is the starter and all that does is it spins, you know, it spins and catches the flywheel and spins up the engine. So you have your starter relay here and if you don't know what a starter relay does, all it does is the battery is connected to this side, this side, the, that same cable is just connected to the side of the starter. So on this right here, you can see we got two nubs, two bolts, one here, one here. On, you know, here's a starter right here. You got these two nubs. One comes directly from the battery. The other one goes, you can see it connects directly down into the starter. Just positive right down into the starter. And there's a little teeny nub right here. See this right here? And this just goes to your key switch. You can run a teeny skinny wire to your key switch and it brings the wire, the power to this little teeny wire transfers it turns this into an electromagnet this clicks i'll show you how it clicks in a second and just connects this and this exactly like if i just took a big screwdriver and just connected it across those these two out here does it everything the same it's just internal ready let's go some more so that's what this is doing right on here but it has a second function and that is also because when it clicks it moves and they capitalized on that and the movement actually engages the bendix into the into the flywheel so two functions this gets energized there's just a coil of wire in here same if you you know it just turns it into electromagnetic the exact same if you wrapped a wire around a nail and it turned into a magnet you know by connecting it to a nine volt battery exactly the same so this gets energized through this little teeny connection right here and that pulls this iron core this way which kicks this out to here this copper tab pushes out which connects onto the back of these two bolts right here it's, it's just a bolt with copper on the back so this copper chunk right here just touches here and touches on the other side of the bolt and transfers power from here through this copper tab out to the other side. That's it. Now, that's how the starter relay works and the number one reason why these things fail, that's why this one is on the bench right here is the starter relay failed. Um, problem is, this isn't generally serviceable. It is not serviceable, I will say that. It's not serviceable. So, you can see that I have it apart but I had to break some connections I could solder it back up. It, it is serviceable, but not it's not user serviceable, if you want to say that. So I, let's test a relay real fast. Mm -hmm. This is a standalone relay, but it's the exact same thing in the other thing. And it just passes power from here over to here. There's no power over on this terminal yet. The, the meter's just grounded to the body. This wire is just grounded to the body. We got power coming to here, and it's ending. So this would be our key switch. This is exactly what our key would do. So power would be right there, and then our key would just touch positive. You can hear it, and we got voltage passing straight through over to here now. Starting the running, passing power down to the starter. So now that we talked about the starter solenoid, which I think is the number one cause for starter failure, let's go to the 
brushes, which is a secondary cause. And that can be accessed pretty easily on virtually every single starter. They're right here on the back, whether it's this 60s, 1960s, 70s starter, this 80s starter, or these modern 2010-ish starters. They're virtually all the same, except for some of the Hondas, and I'll show you that in a second. The brushes, so we'll take this. This one is identical. This one's just already taken apart right here. The Chevy starter right here, this one failed because the brushes got coated in oil. And the problem with having a starter soaked in oil, you can see this, is this paste right here is brush material with grit and oil all mixed together and it creates essentially like a lapping compound, a sandpaper, and it just sits there and sands out and wears out the brushes and you lose contact, stuff like that. And a lot of times what you can do is it'll actually wear out the commutator. This one's actually pretty flat. There's some good scoring in there. So if this gets worn out to the point that there's grooves in it, and I know that's what's wrong with this old Ford one, is the brushes are worn, but the commutator has such a groove in it that it's not worth rebuilding because this doesn't generally come in a rebuild kit. So brushes right here. So if you want to do a rebuild kit, it'll come with this brush housing right here. But do not buy a rebuild kit unless it comes with this guy as well. So if you want to buy a rebuild kit, and I did just look it up, for this particular one, I found them for about 30 bucks. So it comes with this whole thing, because this isn't serviceable, and this whole thing um, for about 30 bucks, which is a heck of a deal for a, um, I think this was about $150 starter. And it takes, the hardest part about this whole project is actually just holding all these in with little pins and picks. You gotta hold that all four in at the same time that you, you see how that wants to hold in there. Well, at the same time, you jam this in here. But once you get this, this one's all oiled up. Once you get that in there, you got to be able to slide this in here without this jumping. Watch it jump. Watch, I'll show you. Without it jumping out of your things. That's the hardest part. But it's easily doable. You don't really need to jump into the front of that. Um, Honda did it a little bit different, and I think theirs is super cool. Where's the starter solenoid? Where's this big old solenoid on the side here? Let me move some of this out of your guys' way to not distract you. Where's this big old thing? They actually integrated it right here into the front. You'll notice that the main terminal for the battery is right here versus on the back of these solenoids like this one. Main terminal's right here. The little teeny starter solenoid terminal is actually right here. But if we take this one off, on the back there are no brushes. The brushes are actually right here on the front. So we'll take this off and you can see the brush assembly, we'll take the motor housing off, is right here. And we have the same four brushes that were in the back of that. They're just integrated into the front. And these brushes are all worn, but this has a super cool function. And like I showed you with the starter solenoid, which is essentially just a big old copper bar that jumps out and touches two metal contacts to pass the positive um, battery juice from one side to the next. You can see right here, these two chunks of copper are not touching. Battery comes in here and just dead ends, essentially. And to connect those, we have, and this comes in a rebuild kit, is essentially just this little copper disc. And so this copper disc is held out of place with this right here. And when this is energized right here, this sucks in and pulls this little metal, this little plate down to there. So this all comes in a rebuild kit. See how this one, this is actually broken off. Actually this little plunger rod right here also comes in the rebuild kit for about 17 bucks to rebuild this almost $300 starter. But it's kind of cool. We can actually even, uh, we'll energize it. Just ground to the body. And if we, doing the exact same thing that a starter solenoid is doing inside. That pulls in, connects these two right there. That's about it. Let's make sure we don't touch those together. But to rebuild this one, super simple. Hardest part is holding all these brushes in, putting it in there. If you were gonna rebuild these, first thing I'd look at is just if the commutator ring right here, if this is all, if this is super grooved, I wouldn't rebuild it because that doesn't come in a rebuild kit. If the rebuild kit doesn't come with your starter solenoid, like in this Chevy starter, um, I wouldn't do it. And then I would look at my magnets. That's about the only thing is, this one actually had shattered magnets. Um, 
I know this one of them, this Chevy starter right here, I actually did fix. The magnets were, it's just a, you can see it, it's just four magnets. There's a little spacer in there and the spacer fell out and the magnets fell out because they're actually not even glued in. They're just these little spacers right here. They're actually riveted on and one of the magnets slipped over and wedged into the starter of this one, but I was able to re-rivet it and fix this one. But just check out your magnets. If your magnets are shattered from somebody hammering it too shot hard, don't rebuild it. It's not worth it. If the uh, commutator, if they're too gummed up, that's bad. And if the kit does not come with a starter solenoid, don't do it. So hopefully that answers questions how starters work. Real quickly, the difference between a gear reduction and a regular starter is just the gearing. Um, these are just straight through starters. So whatever the motor spins, the Bendix spins, exactly the same. These, you can use a lot smaller motor to spin. This spins 10 times where that spins once. So this smaller motor just doesn't have to have as much torque. It just spins a heck of a lot faster to give you the same spinning your motor RPM. Um, and so these ones actually draw motor smaller, you use less juice, everything else and spins the Bendix at the same speed as this does at a, at a weight savings a and everything savings. So that's the difference between a gear reduction and just a straight through starter. Now I will say that I have bought these $60 starters off of Amazon and eBay. You can find brand new starters for 60, 60, 70 bucks, somewhere in there, as low as 50 bucks versus, you know, a rebuilt one from the auto parts store for about 150 or a new one for about 200 bucks. These cheap ones are so cheaply built versus a four pole motor. They're every single one I've taken apart that was brand new from Amazon for or eBay for 50 store bucks. It was only a two pole motor, only two brushes, has less torque. So they're not going to have as much torque to spin up your motor. They're going to, and everything about them, the wiring is thinner. Um, one I have, the wire, one I took apart, the wire going down the starter was actually touching the frame. So if I hadn't taken it apart, it would have just immediately just arced out and could have caused a fire or something else. So you got to look them over careful. But unless you have a starter that's super easy to replace, like super easy to replace, I would not buy one of these $60 ones with Amazon. Um, otherwise, I'd go buy the $150 one or to spend the 20 bucks, 30 bucks to rebuild your own because you'll get the same thing. It just won't be painted pretty like the auto part store is, the auto part rebuild one. But you can do it yourself if you're crazy like me. You can. So, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Get it. Get it. Yeah, get it. Get it. Yeah, get it. Come on. Ah.